Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Thank you for having me in this uh, sacred space. My name is Shadon Mali. I'm a mom, a public servant, an activist, and a resident of Illinois 3, where we have the largest Palestinian American community in the country. Yesterday, I saw something amazing on the front page of the New York Times. The images of the 67 beautiful Palestinian children massacred by the Israelis' collective punishment with a caption that read, they were just children. I was stunned that a publication that was traditionally biased towards Israel is now normalizing the humanity of the Palestinian people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what we call a watershed moment. We are in truly unprecedented times. The pompous Israeli settler we all saw in a clip telling the Palestinian woman homeowner that if he didn't steal her house, someone else would steal it in Sheikh Jarrah was the Palestinian people's George Floyd moment. And the supremacist death to Arab chants in the streets of Jerusalem struck a nerve in all our collective hearts. We are in unprecedented times that the truth is finally being told. Now, mainstream media is using words like ethnic cleansing, genocide, apartheid to describe the realities accurately and truthfully on the ground. And what is the truth on the ground? I have a long list here. I'm not going to uh, say them all, but some of which are, of course, we have settler colonialism, land theft, infringement on the right of free movement. We have separate roads, ration electricity, undrinkable water. We have systemic racism in the workforce and in the educational system. It's humiliation and a choking, a control of every element of daily life where access to medical care is limited according to your ethnicity, even inaccessibility to COVID-19 vaccines during a global pandemic. This is occupation and oppression and it is unassistable. But there's hope, change is here, we all feel it. Public opinion is finally on the side of peace and justice. So what's different now? The accessibility to information that didn't exist before has enabled the oppressed to finally have their voices heard. Everyone with a smart no, smartphone is now a journalist documenting in real time, unfiltered, the destruction, the massacres, the injustices. The mainstream media can no longer remain credible and relevant if they didn't also report the truth. What else has changed? We now have representation on the inside. People like Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, and AOC. They're rising up with no fear and other allies in the peace and justice movement. Our elected leaders like my congresswoman, Marie Newman of Illinois 3, a Southside Irish mom, she boldly led a letter urging Biden to hold Israel accountable along with 24 of her colleagues. This was a first of its kind letter that actually called what Israel was doing war crimes. Unprecedented. Their voices are critical for, for this time in history. They recognize that we as Americans have a responsibility and duty to speak up especially when it is our own allies that are behaving in a way that is inconsistent with the principled America that we are striving to build. An America that doesn't feed or fuel destruction with the $3.8 billion of our tax dollars and unconditional support to Israel and the use of our United Nations veto power to not hold Israel accountable. Israel is the single largest recipient of our military aid. The American people don't want this. They know that we have a moral duty to hold back the, that the money, the sale of the weaponry that destroys homes and children and kill women and, and uh, children. So what can we do? We must hold Israel accountable. I'm going to give you some action items. How do we do this? We can contact our representatives. They are here to serve us, not the lobbies not the oligarchs, us, you and me, their constituents. If you have a congressional representative or senator in the district that you live in who is lukewarm on the issue of human rights and equality for all people, they must hear from you. 
I know here in Illinois 9 that this is Representative Jan Schakowsky's district. Jan needs some encouragement from you, all of you, to hold Israel accountable. You should call her office and let her know to sign on to Betty McCollum's bill, H.R. 2590, the same one that Tariq mentioned a little bit ago. This bill defends the human rights of Palestinian children and families living under Israeli military occupation. So please take out your phone right now, because I'm going to give you this phone number. Add new contact, Jan, Illinois 3, Illinois 9. Her number is 847-328-3409. Please add this number, 847-328-3409. Call her and let her know she must support the bill. If our representatives cannot support this bare minimum bill to leverage USA to protect children, how can they also say they support an end to occupation and a viable two-state solution? Senator Tammy Duckworth also needs to hear from you. I have her number. Do you want it? Yeah? Okay. It's 312-886-3506. Let me tell you something. This works. If enough of us do this consistently and in the numbers of people that march the streets here in Chicago alone, our public servants have no choice but to listen. Some of our leaders just need some extra inspiration. We know they want to be on the right side. We know they want to do the, thing, the right thing. We just need to nudge them a little and we will support them with our votes come election time. Our youth are great at nudging and showing us the way, as we have seen with the rallies and marches they have helped to organize across America. Number two, we need an accountability piece. Uh, another, this is another accountability piece. We must sanction Israel. We sanction other countries like Iran and North Korea when they behave badly. So for consistency's sake, to remain credible, we must also hold Israel accountable. There is a campaign right now going on. Um, if you go to AMP, their website, amp.org, you will find, uh, you, can, you can join this peace and justice call by signing the petition. So, number three, the third thing we need to do, we need to follow and join groups like American Muslims for Palestine, Jewish Voice for Peace, the CIOGC, and many others that are working towards peace and justice. They are organized and mobilized to be effective. They understand the process and the language for success. They have action campaigns on specific bills, letters, and congressional directives. They even hold constituents congressional advocacy days. This is where you, as a constituent, can speak directly to your district representative, and you can have specific asks for them to support bills in line with your values. Lastly, this is the most important piece. This is a piece that I like to do when what, and what I've done and what's, what's brought me here today. We can also volunteer on campaigns. We can help our allies and advocates become elected. Push them harder to support peace and justice. Be that voice in their ear that inspires them, humanizes and links the struggles of people that are thousands of miles away to the struggles of the marginalized here at home in our own country. We must also ensure that our elected leaders are clear and direct about their views on human rights with statements on their websites proudly displayed and before we support them even. This is their pledge to us and we will hold them accountable. I also strongly encourage you to choose a career in the public service area. Behind the scenes, congressional staff have tremendous impact on policy. Our elected leaders are not separate from us. They want to represent us to the best of their abilities. And we must also have their backs with our votes and support come election time. I want to end with free, free Palestine and free all the oppressed people in the world. Thank you for having me.